It's been a massive last 12 months for you. Mm. How do you look back on it all? Yeah, it's been huge, man. You know, three huge fights, three uh, huge events. I don't think anyone's ever done that in boxing. You know, well, not many. Lopez and Haney twice. You know, 36 rounds with two top pound-for-pound -pound fighters. Obviously got the points against Lopez, got all the belts, and then uh, took the risk against Devin Haney. Did it twice and two massive events. So it's been, been a massive uh, 2022, obviously end of 2021, but that whole period of that one year consisted of them three fights. What did it mean to bring two big fights to, to Australia? Uh, it meant the world. You know, for me, that was always my dream, and we always said it, that we're going to go to the US, we're going to do it the hard way, we'll uh, win all, all the belts, or we'll win a world title, when we didn't, obviously, we're going to fight for all the belts. And uh, we'll bring a big fight, a stadium fight to Australia, you know, to, to Melbourne, to Sydney, to wherever it had to be, but it had to be in Australia. And I was so adamant when I won all the belts that the fight's going to be in Australia, no matter what, no matter how much they mon money they offered overseas, I'm fighting here because... You know, it was bigger than just me you know, fighting. It was an event. It brought Australia together. It brought the Greeks together. It brought the whole world. You know, the viewership in America, let alone Australia, was, was huge. It stopped the nation. What did you learn from those two fights with Haney? I learned a lot. You know, Devon is an extraordinary athlete, you know, a, a superb you know, boxer, you know, very sharp, big for the weight, and uh, moves very well. Got a great jab, so you know, I've learned a lot about. I've always known I have that will and that 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 desire. You know, no matter what, you know, we saw in round ten again. I nearly got taken out and kept fighting through whatever adversity I had to, I had to go through. But you know, working inside, you know, someone has the longer reach. You know, pinpoint my shots. You know, not making sure everything has to be at 100%. You know, uh, with my punches, not every shot has to go flying through. You know, zero to 100 real fast. You know, pick your shots, placement, timing. So, you know, Devin does that very well. He's got that, that reach. Obviously, I had that four-inch reach on myself and made things a little, little bit more difficult for me getting on the inside. But, um, and I gave him my all, especially in that second fight, everything I had, you know, to, to, to get through it. You know, I'm very proud of, of, of both of them fights, proud of what I've learned and proud of, you know, how I've sharpened myself, you know, against a guy who's in the top five pound for pound, you know, a, a champion fighter. Despite the results, how proud were you to, and what did it mean to take on the toughest challenge possible? You know, very proud of that. You know, shows the warrior I am. No matter what people say, no matter, you know, what, what online people want to, you know, talk about, you know, I'm very proud of not being able to, you know, suck it up and, and, and cherry pick some opponents like a lot of these other guys do. You know, I won't lie, we had about 10 to 15 different names that I probably would have beat, you know, all in one night, easy fights, easy money, but you know, I was so adamant that I wanted Devin Haney or Vasily Lomachenko when I fight the best. I'm at the top now, I was the top dog, give me the best names. And I just, as an as a athlete, you know, a guy that's very competitive, I just knew that it would bring the best out of me. And as much as I lost in fights against Devin, it did bring the best out of me. I showed a lot more you know, to myself uh, to, to become a better fighter and it's going to show now in this next part of my career moving forward. Before the rematch, you mentioned that you weren't sure you'd keep going if you got beat. How seriously did you consider retirement? No, no, that was just a, a mental you know, thing for myself to say, okay, this is all or nothing. But I love fighting. You can see the way I train. You can see the way you know, I'm here in my gym. You know, I'm buying things to, to benefit myself in my training. Um, I love the fight game. You know, until it's really time to say goodbye and, and things uh, you know, slowed up with my reactions and my speed and my movement. Uh, then I'll, I'll call it a day. You know, I've got a beautiful family, and uh, you know, I'm very blessed. I've made a lot of money from the sport, so you know, I wouldn't uh, you know, push myself to that extra bit to, to get injured and be permanently damaged from this sport. But um, for now, man, I'm still young. I'm only 29. I've been around a long time. People think I'm a, a little bit older, but 29. I fought the best in my division. You know, won the belts, lost the belts. I've got so much more to offer, and uh, got a huge name, not only in Australia, but in America as well. So. The big fights are there. We've got a lot of these guys calling me out still, and, uh, and I say, bring it on. Now that you've lost the belts, where, mm. where does that leave you in your career and the division? You know, I'm in a great position because I'm in no rush. You know, I don't need to fight for, for, for money. I don't need to fight because I've got to pay the bills. 
You know, I'm in a great position where I fight when I want to fight, when I feel ready to fight. Now that itch is, is definitely coming back. But we're working on certain things where I'm evolving as a fighter. I've learned from the two losses that I had. I've learned from the big win I had with Lopez. I've learned against the Mickey Bayers and the Selbys. So we're going back and refreshing the memory, refreshing things that, you know, I do really good. And then going back and looking at things that I, that I don't do well and I need to keep improving as a fighter. So, um, you know, for me, I just keep improving, keep staying focused, keep that hunger where that hunger is extraordinary and, uh, you know, we'll fight when the time is right. These other guys, they have to fight because, you know, they're, they're chasing, you know, the, the payday, they're chasing a, a world title belt. I've got all the world title belts sitting at home collecting dust, you know, so um, I'm very proud of all of them. But for me, you know, my time will come again. And uh, Devon obviously is a big, big lightweight. You know, he'll have this one more fight against Lomachenko, he'll move up. And then uh, it's going to open up the, the doors for, for myself again to, you know, win another belt. You won a lot of fans and got a lot of praise when you, when you became champ. And then, as you mentioned before, a lot of people on social media who were, who were quite happy and, mm. and quick to, to, to knock you uh, after you lost. What do you say to those? Yeah, I don't care about these people, you know, I don't care about what they say. You know, these guys got to worry about their own lives, worry about paying their own bills and paying their rent and uh, getting up early in the morning and going to work. I'm very happy with my life. I'm very, uh, you know, proud of what I've achieved, but I'm always uh, hungrier for more, you know. So I focus on, on my life, I focus on my family, my kids, and uh, I know who support me. I, I see the fans, I see the love. You know, 99% of the fans are behind me, support me. You get that 1% that want to put their two cents in, but, uh, you know, everyone has, you know, their haters, everyone has the, the people that are going to write things about, about them and, uh, you know, for them that, that, that want to talk, you know, about me or want to put things out there, no worries, thank you, you know, it, it motivates me a little bit more, but again, I don't really focus too much on them. How's life been for you and what have you been up to since the rematch? You know, life is still busy, you know, wherever I go, it's, uh, it's always, you know, incredible. We saw just this morning at the track, you know, people, you know, saying hello and how proud they are and how excited they are for, for this year. Wherever I go, it's, 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 uh, it's crazy, man. You know, we go on holidays with the kids and, you know, I get stopped, you know, non-stop. So it shows the, the support that I have from Australia. I'm very blessed and, and proud of it and, and humbled by it. Um, you know, for me, I just, you know, keep working hard, keep staying focused and, you know, uh, you know pushing towards what, what I'm trying to achieve still that I'm in the sport. Has your approach to or your relationship with boxing changed in recent times? No, no, look, boxing is boxing. I've known the, the business side of boxing for a long time. I know how, how hard it gets and how uh, you know, tough this game is. You know, for me, I actually uh, love it even more and I'm in a position where I can help the, the next generation, help these younger fighters that don't get an opportunity to be able to, to get on these big cards. And you know, obviously we're looking forward to, to possibly bringing some more big fights here to Australia. And the reason being is because not only for myself and to continue my career, you know, moving towards another world title, but to help these younger guys, give them an opportunity that a lot of these guys wouldn't get. When are you looking to fight again? I'm going to fight uh, end of April, early May. That's the time. Um, the way we're working in the gym, you know, I feel great, you know, getting stronger. You know, I've learned a lot from my losses, learned a lot from my wins. And uh, like I said, we are working on certain things to keep evolving me as a fighter, as a warrior. And they keep getting better and better. And I see my mistakes, I know my mistakes. You know, I'm not a sore loser, I'm a student of the game, so I put my hand up yet, that's a mistake there. When we go back and look at the tape, there's another mistake. All right, let's work on that. Let's perfect that. Let's do it a thousand times so we don't make that mistake again. Um, that will be the time, you know, end of April, early May. But like I said, I'm in no rush. You know, if we get to, to March and I'm still working on things, okay, we push a little bit more. You know, I'm, I'm not in no rush. What are your goals for 2023? 23, you know, back in line for a title shot, get some big, big wins. You know, we will fight a former world champion in the next fight. That, that, is, that is already said. Um, we will, again, not look for an easy fight, but I want to bounce back. Bounce back in, in, a, in, a, in a good way, make some good statements, and knock some people out, show that the power that I, that I still possess, and uh, just look good. And then look at uh, end of the year, some big, big fights. You know, still got some big names. Shakur Stevenson, obviously, we talked about end of this year. Javante Davis, Ryan Garcia. Uh, you know, Haney's going to move up. Regardless of what Lomachenko does in that fight, win or lose, I still love that fight. We were meant to fight, so, you 
you know, I still want that fight, you know, somewhere down the track and uh, move towards a world title. Do you feel like you've got something to prove and, and if so, why? Yeah, look, I feel that I, I've always had something to prove. When I had the belts, I've had something to prove. When, you know, I was coming to get the belts, something to prove. Now that I lost the belts and I'm in this position where I've lost twice, you know, to, to, to the one guy, uh, I've got something to prove because a lot of people in boxing have a short memory. They forget, you know, who he beat, what he did. You know, a lot of guys say, oh, he only beat Lopez. We'll go back and look, you know, to the other two former world champions I've beat before that, all the big names here in Australia. So um, I've got something to prove, you know, to, to myself, to myself to, you know, show that I'm still here. I'm still ferocious. I'm still the guy that, you know, shocked the world and had all them built. So I was the guy that was the top dog not so long ago, king of this division not so long ago. So my time will come again. What's motivating you at the moment? Uh, motivated is, uh, my motivation is, you know, just getting the world title again. You know, it's a good, good time when you got that world title and then doing it even better. You know, I don't mean in the ring doing it better, but doing it outside the ring even better. You know, I've done a, done a great job when I had all the belts, you know, but uh, this time will be different when I become champion again. So that's my motivation, my motivation for my kids as well. Obviously, I want to show them uh, that dad can come back from anything. Not only could he shock the world and become a world champion, but he can come back from defeat and adversity. So you know, that's my motivation for my family and, uh, you know, getting back on top. You mentioned it there. You've been the champ, now mm. you're the, the challenger. How's that different and, and how does it sit with you? Yeah, it's good. Like I said, I've been in that position for, for most of my career. You know, I was champion for, you know, what, that seven, eight months. Had all the belts and, uh, you know, it was, it was a different, different life when I had all the belts. You know, a lot more uh, exposure, a lot more things you had to attend. Um, now I'm back in that position where I still have commitments, but, you know, I'm a lot more wiser and smarter with, with certain things that, that I do go and do and, uh, you know, like I said, my time will come again and when it does, I'll be uh, definitely more than ready. Has your training intensity changed? Uh, look, we're, we're putting the work, you know, uh, at 29 years of age, we work smart, we work hard and we pick our moments. You know, some days your body's feeling it more, so we'll pick the right moments and pull back a little bit and then some days you feel electric and you, uh, you're putting three sessions that day, so I still work hard. You know, I'm ferocious by, by nature, in the ring, in the gym, no matter what I'm doing. You know, you're driving my right, I'm ferocious in, in anything I do. Um, that's the kind of person I am. So my training is, is great with my coach, uh, Chris, and uh, the team that I have, you know, my strength conditioning coach as well, Mia. We, we put in the work and we're going to keep evolving as a fighter. Can you map out or, or predict what you see happening in the division in the next 12 or so months? Uh, I see Haney. You know, defending his belts against Lomachenko. You know, I, I, I really do like Lomachenko as, as a person, as a fighter. I just think it's Father Thomas has caught him, and I think Haney is just too good. You know, stylistically, it's, it's, it's a bad matchup, you know, for Lomachenko. Kind of like it was for, for me as well. Not, not the right matchup, but, you know, that's the risk that we take as fighters. I think he, uh, he looks good in that fight, makes a statement, vacates the belts at that stage. You know, we would have uh, mapped out our next fight and then uh, the belts are going to be vacated and the big names, the big fish in the division are going to be uh, hunting them belts and I'm one of them, uh, them big fish again. One of those big fights that looks like it might happen is, happen is Tank and Ryan mm. Garcia. How do you see that one going? Or do, do you think we'll see it and how do you see it going? Yeah, as much as they say yeah, that they have a date, you know, until it's fully announced, um, you know, nothing's ever certain in boxing. But um, look, it's a great fight. You know, we saw Tank over the weekend. He's electric. He's very powerful, and uh, Ryan is is very sharp as well. He's got that speed. He's got that size. You know, if a couple uh, weeks ago, I said that Ryan can, can edge it, but just seeing that Tank's been busy. He had his fight again, obviously last uh, on the weekend. Ryan decided not to take a fight. That might work in you know, a disadvantage for himself. Um, so I think maybe Javante takes the edge now, but it's a great fight, 50-50 fight where you just don't know. And that's what makes exciting uh, you know, fights and what makes boxing so great. How do you see your path back to a world title? A uh, couple more former world champions looking good. You know, keep uh, sharpening up the skills inside the ring and uh, making good statements inside them fights and then bouncing to either a vacant belt against a big, big name or let the division take its, take its way. 
let a few of these guys collect some, collect them, build or so, and then we jump on them. That's the way. Um, but like I said, I'm in no rush, and I know my time will come, and uh, keep working the, the way I've been in the gym, and I'll get another belt. Prior to the two Haney fights, you fought outside of Australia for a long mm. time. Would you be happy to go overseas again, or you want to bring more fights back here? Uh, there is a little bit of talk about a, a big fight in Vegas, but um, for now, you know, I'd like to bring some big fights here to Sydney. I think Sydney deserves some big fights. Um, I'm still the biggest name in Australian boxing, you know, when it comes to fan base, when it comes to what I've, what I've achieved in these last two fights, you know, it's, it's massive. So we still got some big plans here for Australia, but if the opportunity comes to fight in America or to fight in the UK, um, you know what I'm about, I'm a, I'm a warrior, a road warrior, so um, definitely, you know, we, we could take that option or bring the big fights here and, you know, look good here and make some statements and, you know, rise up boxing once again. What are some of the names on your hit list? Uh, look, these former champions, you know, the, uh, the Lenares, the Burchelts, um, all these guys uh, are good names. You know, Shakur Stevenson's a great name as well. Um, depends what happens with Ryan Garcia, Javante Davis. You know, me and Javante Davis, I think he's a great fight. They're both very explosive, you know, very sharp. Obviously, he's, he's got that great power, but I can bang as well as we've seen. So um, it's a great fight. Lomachenko, like I said, is uh, regardless of what happens in that fight, a fight that I love to have. So there's many names. I'm part of that, that, that big pool of, of great fighters in the lower division and you know, big, big name in the division. Tell me about that matchup with Shakur. He's, he's mm. struggling to get a fight at 135, but, but you've put your hand up already. Yeah, look, like I said, I've been busy. I've been in this division. I ruled this division not so long ago. So for me, I can do what I want in this division. I can take the time. Now, I've already planned the end of April, early May. He's going to fight in March. No problem, have your fight. Welcome to the lightweight division against whoever you, you fight. And then from there, we can see each other end of the year. No problem. For me, I fight anybody. I don't care who they are.